So I should start by declaring a bit of a personal interest in this subject because I do actually mm -hmm. live in Park Hill. I live in one of the newly restored flats in Park Hill. But I mean, for me, it was somewhere that I really didn't know about until I, you know, I was moving to Sheffield, I needed somewhere to live and I started looking around for flats. And I think, was that the same for you? You discovered this building when you first came to Sheffield or did you know about it before? Yeah, no, I'd never heard of it before. I'd never actually visited uh, Sheffield before getting a job here in 2008. And um, I arrived by train uh, one evening and just saw this immense structure looming up above the train station and it just captivated me. I mean, I found it, I found it fascinating. Um, it reminded me almost of Carcassonne, one of these kind of great French chateau. And ever since then, really, I've wanted to, I've wanted to find out more about it. And um, it's just such an iconic uh, building. It's, it's a building that seems to, to inspire a strength of feeling in the city, um, unlike anything else. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's the largest listed building, I think, in, in Europe. Yes. And, yeah, you know, people, people either love it or hate it. I mean, you get mm. a real sense here. There are some people who love it. There are some people who want to see it knocked down. And I think that's a very interesting debate in terms of the heritage. Yeah, I mean, I found that uh, a couple of years ago, I gave a talk at Western Park Museum that was really trying to put Park Hill in the context of, a, of an international planning tradition. And um, I'm used to speaking to fairly small audiences about 19th century American urban history, but there was about 80 or 90 people in a room for a lunchtime lecture. And the room was split. I mean, it was extraordinary. There were people who lived in the building who were very angry about what's happened to it in, uh, in, in recent years. There were Sheffielders who thought this was the ugliest building in, in Europe and wanted it to be, to be torn down. It, it inspired a, a passion, um, a strength of feeling that that you very rarely see um, in, uh, in, in, in other buildings and, and, and that just made it all the more interesting for me. But then some of that is around politics, isn't it? It's around mm. the kind of the gentrification, the question of whether this should continue to be council housing, um, you know, the fact that you know, people are understandably, you know, critical of the fact that, you know, it's now being taken over by the middle classes, people like me, mm. university lecturers, we're moving in there, we're, we're driving out the proper working class inhabitants of that space and to me that's quite interesting because you know if you go right back if you go, go back to the medieval or the early modern period of Sheffield the park on the hill mm -hmm. was the hunting park for the lords of the Sheffield manor so it was kind of this space for aristocratic leisure yeah. there was certainly no kind of it wasn't a working class space until really rather later on so I think it's interesting to reflect on the way that the whole you know the class character of the park and the hill have kind of changed over time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, by the 19th century though, when Sheffield was really developing as a, uh, as a centre of steel production, it had become a working class yes, neighbourhood. I mean, yeah. this was yeah. little Chicago, yeah. right? It was a home um, for, for street gangs. It was a place that was notorious in a way mm. for, the, for the kind of rough and tumble of its, uh, of its street life. And I think that's something that the, the, the planners, the architects really, uh, in some ways, try to preserve the best of, while also, um, you know, while also uh, rejecting mm -hmm. the worst of. When they built Park Hill, they wanted to keep that street life, the famous streets in the sky, mm -hmm. were an attempt to maintain that working class sense of community, but to create an urban an urban environment that was 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 much more was much mm -hmm. healthier, I suppose, yeah. much more comfortable for the for the residents themselves who've been used to living in mm -hmm. unsanitary uh, yeah, conditions. Yeah. So what I find really extraordinary about the building is that in some ways it, it doesn't look British. I mean this is something that's influenced by the French architect uh, Le Corbusier. Yeah it really reminded me actually when I first saw it of a school trip that I'd taken to France when I was you know very much younger and yeah. I'd seen this kind of new town outside Lille and it looked like oh, that. Okay. It was really interesting. Yeah. yeah carry on sorry. No no I mean it, it's just uh, it, it's extraordinary how uh, un-British it, it, it looks in that regard and yet the architects were so determined to retain the street life of the neighbourhood that had that had stood there before um, the streets in the sky wide enough to drive milk floats uh, along the street names named after the streets of the old neighbourhood the residents 
are housed alongside the neighbours from where they've been before. I mean, I'm not sure whether the new building's been able to, to retain well, it. The afternoon. new building still has the street names. We still have them. You go in the lift and it's got, you know, Norwich and Long Henry and Haig Street. And so, mm. so those are still there. And of course, we have people who have moved down from the blocks at the top of Park Hill into the new redevelopment. Um, about a third of it, I think, is still social housing. So there is that mix and there is a centre. There are people there who've lived in Park Hill for a very, very long time and, you know, the, and, you know, as the whole development goes ahead, I think that, well, I hope there will become, you know, more of a sense of community, but it's obviously going to be quite a different community and in, mm. some, in many ways that's a good thing from the community, you know, in the immediate past. And, but one of the things I, I think is really interesting is this kind of whole choice about the preservation of Park Hill mm. and the choice about preserving this 1960s piece of architecture and clearly a lot of people wanted to get rid of it and if you go just across the tram lines and a little bit closer to the city centre and um, they're getting rid of 60s architecture to try and take us back to the 17th century and to mm. take us back to Sheffield Castle which was um, demolished in the context of the Civil War so I think those choices about you know when you keep the 60s whether you, whether you want to go back to the 17th century whether you even want to take park hill back to the historic park of you know the medieval period the 16th century you know all these are really interesting debates and i guess that you know amidst all the arguments about heritage you you, you have choices to make about what's important and why it's important and do you think it's purely a, a commercial decision medieval heritage sells in the way that uh, 1960s high modernism doesn't well i mean i suppose that i think the part of the reason for excavating the castle i think is because the 60s buildings there that once were occupied by shops and offices are just lying empty Mm. and they're not working as a piece of commercial space in the city so I mean I think it makes absolute sense to try something else whereas with Park Hill I think you know you've got all these houses and you've got a housing crisis it it, it mm. makes sense to, to, to preserve these as houses just you know for the simple value that they're useful for people to live in quite apart from any other you know quality of, of heritage space it seemed to be ridiculous to demolish 700 flats when you know you have people who are desperate for housing. Well it was so well built I yes. mean compared to other uh, brutalist uh, developments, uh, including plenty in Sheffield, mm. like Kelvin Flats or the, the Hyde Park uh, Flats. Park Hill was, was made to last and, um, and has endured for, uh, for so long on, on account of that. But it's interesting that you, you raised the, the, the um, restoration or the, uh, you could say the restoration of the mm -hmm. castle at, um, at Castle Market because mm -hmm. I um, Owen Hathaway, the architectural mm -hmm. critic, has, has written um, very critically about mm -hmm. what's happened to, to Park Hill. Yeah. I mean, he mm -hmm. really lauds the, um, uh, the vision behind the, mm -hmm. the building in, in the 1950s and the 1960s, mm -hmm. but he's much more critical about what's happened to it mm -hmm. more recently. And he's also a big fan of, of Castle Market as a, as a space in, uh, in, in which people are, are kind of able to um, you know, use it imaginatively, and, and um, I just wonder what you thought of that. Well, I mean, personally, I don't see why you can't have both. I don't see why you can't have a castle, you know, the, mm. the medieval castle remains opened up, available for people to visit, and a bustling market space alongside it. Now, that's not the, not the choice that the council has made. The council has chosen to move the market to a different part of Sheffield, I, I believe, with a different regeneration agenda in mm. mind. But, you know, I don't see why you can't have both, you know, this, this medieval and early modern heritage on show and make something more of that and, you know, maintain a community life alongside it. But, but I think there are, you know, very, very many more factors beyond architecture that feed into, yeah. you know, why there have been so many problems with that area of the city centre. So, I mean, do you see Park Hill, what's happened to it in recent years as a betrayal of, of Sheffield's heritage as the People's Republic of South Yorkshire? Well, I suppose that I think, you know, Park Hill has suffered as a consequence of the housing policies that successive governments have pursued. Mm. I mean, you know, when, when Park Hill was built, social housing was something that was accessible to a very broad spread of the population. My grandfather had a council house. My grandfather had been to Oxford University and, and had written three mm. books. Um, but he rented for, you know, a substantial part of his later life, and that wasn't unacceptable then. It's quite an extraordinary shift. Mm. Uh, at one point, I think as recently as 1970s, about 45% of Sheffield's housing stock mm. was council-owned. 
Um, now, uh, the vast majority of people who live in council housing, I think about 95% or more, are on another means tested benefit. It's become a, a refuge yeah. in a yeah. sense it's for, the, for the poor. It's become housing of last resort. And exactly. I think that, you know, part of the, the effort with this sort of, you know, mixed tenure social, mixed tenure housing development is to to create this sort of social mix slightly artificially by having this mixture of renters and buyers. I mean, it certainly isn't the only way to create a social mix, but, you know, it's, mm. it's the one that we've ended up with.